this is such an integral part of Beijing's history. But it's just been left to completely rot. Hi, welcome back to Burbex, Bryn's Urban Exploration. Today I have brought you to a place where thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people were executed during the Qing Dynasty. Yes, I brought you to the Imperial Execution Grounds here in Saishikou in Beijing. Before we go out on this trip, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for great new videos from Burbex, Bryn's Urban Exploration every week. Let's go! If you're new to my channel, Burbex stands for Brin's Urban Exploration. But did you know originally it stood for Beijing Urban Exploration? And that's because Beijing is really where my heart is. This is my favorite place in China and I love exploring China. So this area is called Sai Shi Kou and that means vegetable market because for about a thousand years since the Ling Dynasty this place was traditionally a huge vegetable market but then from the 17th century right through till about 1912 during the Qing Dynasty this area was used as a massive execution grounds You can see on the top of this doorstop here a little mythical creature and that's actually called a Pichou and Pichou is one of the seven sons of the dragon. You might actually be familiar with Pichou because in Japanese it's Pikachu! Pikachu! Pika! Pikachu! The Pichou represents gaining wealth and not losing it because a distinctive feature of the Pichou is that while it can eat, it can't shit because it's got no butthole, right? So that means that the Picho can eat gold, but it doesn't shit it out. The Picho represents kind of holding on to wealth. There's actually a very severe insult in Chinese, which is Juni Shang Yiga Haiza, male PR, which means I hope your son is born without an asshole. Bit of a strange one, but very offensive. Juni Shang Yiga Haiza, male PR. <laughs> So right now we're in a hutong and hutong is just like the alleyways that bisect Beijing. A lot of these alleyways have actually been destroyed or renovated and gentrified so they've lost a lot of their charm but I love exploring these old hutongs. You might have seen them in some of my other videos about Changchun. You can check out a video about hutongs just here. It's amazing to think that people would have lived in these tiny cramped hutongs so living so close together oh, there's a camera up there getting back to what i was saying about the execution grounds though nobody knows exactly where the execution grounds used to be but it's generally agreed that they were in this area and what would happen to prisoners is that early in the morning they would be taken out of the jail in a cart and the first stop on their trip to the execution grounds was actually to a wine shop a rice wine shop and it was called the broken bowl wine shop and do you know why it was called that the prisoners were given one last bowl of rice wine it's almost like a final meal 
for people on death row. And once they'd finished that bowl of rice wine, the bowl would be smashed. Then the next stop would be the execution grounds, which are nearby. Executions were usually held at 11.30 a.m. In ancient China, they didn't have the same time system that we have, and that time was actually called Wu Shi San Ke, which basically means noon time three quarters. I'm not sure how that system works. Between 1614 and 1912, thousands of people were executed in this area. This area has a very bad reputation among the locals, and which is why even though it's right in the middle of Beijing, it's extremely undeveloped. It's just been left to fall down. There are thousands of ghosts roaming the land around me. Executions here are synonymous with a torture style, which was called death by a thousand cuts, which in Chinese is called Ling Chi. Ling Chi, they would basically start to the shit out of me then. Ling Chi was used as a method of torture. Thousands of little cuts would be made to the body. Families of the people who were being executed would often give a bribe to the executioner so that the executioner could take the knife and stab the prisoner in the heart to avoid the pain. Extremities were often chopped off. Legs, fingers, buttocks, breasts, all of these were cut off. This was almost a double insult because the Chinese at that time believed that if your body wasn't whole when you died, you wouldn't be whole in the next life. That's kind of adds insult to extreme injury. Even though death by a thousand cuts was an execution method, it was also used as a torture method. And this was used by the imperial family against their enemies, against people that had been traitorous. It was also used for those who had killed their parents for matricide or patricide. Of course, death by a thousand cuts wasn't the only way that people were executed here. People were also hanged and also beheaded. There is a belief in this surrounding area that if you see somebody at night and they have a red line across their throat like this or a piece of red string wrapped around their throat that this is actually the ghost of one of the victims and you shouldn't talk to them. You should also avoid people wearing turtleneck sweaters because these may be the spirits of deceased victims. Additionally, hello, I'm filming someone filming me. <laughs> so this guy, he says he's from Sichuan, that's in the south. He says that there's ghosts over there. And I think that's where the execution grounds might be. Rumor has it that there is a blackened area over there where nothing will grow. And that's where the executions took place. He doesn't want to go with me. Niao pay what you ma? That means he doesn't want to go. See you later. It's funny that he said it's over there because I had a really strong feeling it was over there. Like I was saying, what was I saying? Interestingly, the traditional Chinese medicine shops around here won't serve people at night. Most of the shops around here, they will open at night, but the Chinese traditional medicine shops will not because they believe that the spirits might come in to try and bring them back to life again. I'm just approaching an area now, and this has a very strong feeling of death around it. This looks like a hanging tree. <laughs> you can see behind me there's a tree with ropes hanging off it everywhere. I don't think you can get a better hanging tree than this one and this tree looks to be the oldest in the area and I'm getting a very strong vibe from it. Let's keep looking around a little bit, see if we can see the scorched earth area. 
like I said, nobody knows exactly where the execution grounds are around here. And a lot of it has been covered up and a lot of it's been demolished. But you get the very strong feeling that something has occurred around here. A lot of stray cats live around here and I actually saw an old cat lady this morning feeding all the animals. She looked a bit suspicious of me though. I don't think she was a ghost though. Typically, when we Westerners think about execution, we'll think about a stage in the middle of the town which has got maybe a guillotine or the hangman's equipment all set up on there, a big stage. But in fact, for the Chinese at this time, they basically just used something like this, like a door frame, right? And it was about the size for a human. And that they would tie this person to the door frame and from there torture that person. You can see they would have had their hands bound to the frame and then from there they would be tortured to scream and writhe in pain before they died. This is just a regular door frame but it gives you some idea of how that person would be executed. There's actually photographic evidence from the beginning of the 20th century which shows Chinese executions. I'm going to show you a few pictures now but I must tell you they are extremely graphic and if you don't want to look at this Look away now. All right, you can open your eyes again now. So we're actually going into one of the buildings which is on the execution grounds. This place is pretty messed up. I can't wait to go in. <laughs> strong small cat piss. It smells just like an enormous cat has come in here. Maybe a lion or a tiger has just come in and pissed on everything. Oh, this place is awesome. This place is so spooky. It's amazing that this place is such an integral part of Beijing's history, but it's just been left to completely rot. Oh wow, I've just seen the best thing ever. There's a poster of Brooke Shields, Star of Blue Lagoon on the wall. That's amazing. I don't think Brooke Shields was executed here. If you know any different, please leave a comment in the box below.
the people that lived here in the past must have been quite affluent because this is a two-story house and there are a large number of rooms in this house. I'm gonna try and go upstairs now. It looks proper sketchy. I hope I don't fall down. Looks like the floor's given way here. I'm not sure how to get across. I don't wanna fall through the floor. All right, I made it up onto the second floor. This is actually very typical of places that were very fancy in the past, is that they're such large spaces that if they're left abandoned for a while, people will come in and squat inside them. So actually you can see a lot of people have squatted here in the past, and that is characteristic of these old, abandoned, fancy buildings in Beijing. A lot of them anyway. I wonder if this guy was executed. This guy's just waiting. And it's just like this little box here. Oh, that's so weird. It's just got one magpie feather in it. Look at that. Just one magpie feather. Magpies are my favorite bird. I'm sure I've told you that in other videos. This balcony here would have had an awesome view of the market and probably of the execution grounds. Whoever lived here would have been a very affluent person probably somebody connected to the law, maybe a judge, members of the imperial staff. Interestingly, even though China still has executions for major criminals, death by a thousand cuts and public execution was actually outlawed in 1915 with the founding of the Republic of China. I just found this very, very old bottle of beer. Look, it says five star lager beer, Wuxing Pijiao. There's still beer in it. I'm wondering, should I taste it? Probably not. It looks like it's still fizzy. If you look at a lot of the architectural features here, you can see there's all this red wood. That red wood is a speciality in China and they call that Hong Mu, literally red wood and lots of people try to fake it these days. You can see it in this frame here. It's quite beautiful. To be honest, I'm getting a little bit of a bad vibe right now. I can hear lots of magpies calling in the background, kind of like sound, and magpies are like my alarm bells. They kind of set off my magpie senses. So I think it's about time I got out of this sketchy house. I'm definitely coming back here again though. This place is amazing. Holy shit, look at this tool I've just found. I just noticed that I cut myself on the cap of the really old beer. I hope that doesn't mean I'm gonna turn into some weird beer vampire that comes out here at night and sucks drunk people's blood. Jiogui. Jiogui actually means alcoholic in Chinese. In the whole scheme of ghosts in China, it's actually somebody in the previous life who in their previous life drank too much and now as a ghost, they have to just continuously drink all the time. That's a terrible way to go, but that's karma for you. Karma is a bitch. 
Well, I'm a bit disappointed we didn't find the actual execution ground, but it's hotly debated where people were actually executed in this area. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more great videos from Burbex, Bryn's urban exploration every week. Let's go!